Well, that sucks if you're a buyer, that is. Sale of family inventory just took a nose dive this week with a surge of properties going under agreement. And then there's the condo market that just feels like it's well chugging along at last year's pace. In this video, we're going to go over the single family condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. And we're also going to do a quick interest rate update. And then we'll also talk about some relevant current events because, well, they matter. Last week, I was talking about how the market felt like stronger demand was here, but it just not had yet played out through the stats yet. Well, it looked like the market got the message. At this point, I feel like I'm just begging. But if you are a potential buyer this spring, please start your search a little earlier. It could save you tens of thousands of dollars as this market begins to heat up and kicks into a crazy gear. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to the real estate market, then know I'm here to help. Also, as a quick heads up, I'm looking to buy houses. Let me know if there are any houses that you're aware of that need a lot of tender, loving care. Friends, family members, a random house that you drove by that was, well, in shambles. The uglier, then the better. If you know of one, then reach out or visit cashofferma.com. Let's get into all this and jump into the single family market stats. And we're down. Now, inventory is down to 2,822 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. It's down 178 units from last week, which is now 2.3% less than the amount of homes for buyers to look at just 28 days ago. Last week, I was worried that the single family inventory levels were going to make me look bad and shoot beyond that 3,000 unit range. The data makes a lot more sense this week. Inventory levels are going to continue to suck for home buyers. They're actually going to continue to suck this winter. They're also going to continue to suck this spring. And then they're going to suck this summer. Uh, what about the fall market, you ask? Well, that's a little too far out, but good chance they suck too. Here's a better view of the nose dive. Last week is what we traditionally see this time of the year. We should see inventory levels pull back a little more then level off until about the end of February. This is when we start to see more inventory come on the market, but also start seeing a lot more buyer demand. We have 247 fewer single family homes on the market today than we did today back in 2023, 884 more single family homes on the market today than inventory levels in 2022. We listed 571 single family homes this week. That is 66 more units or 13.1% more than the same week in 2023. So three weeks ago, it was 12% less. Then two weeks ago, it was 10% less. Then last week, we were even with 2024. Now we've gone to listing over 13% more houses this week. The market seems to be waking up a bit. Now the four week rolling average is 458 units, but that data includes a slow week from Christmas to New Year's with 220 new listings came on the market. This, well, next week actually, we really should start to see that data normalize. Here is the surprise. Under agreements just came in hot. It just seems like this year's market was one week behind last year. We had 735 homes go under agreement last week. Now, this was 76 units or 11.5% more than the same week last year when 659 single-family houses went under agreement. It's in the pending data. That's where the big difference was. This is what made the inventory levels take a dive like they did. I don't love week-over-week -week data change, but this was a 33.4% increase in pending activity week-over-week. Week. Now, the four-week rolling average is 468 units. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were up by 13%, while under agreements, they were up by 11.5%. There are 384 single-family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $727,000 and a median sales price of $575,000. Now, sales levels compared to the same week last year were down by 7.7% as there were 416 single-family houses that sold this week last year for an average sales price of 677 grand. Months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in zero to five months. That's considered a seller's market. But the closer that you get to zero, the more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. Now, this week, months of inventory nudged down to 1.23 months from last week's 1.24 months. Now, the 1.23 months this week is compared to the 1.16 months this week last year. This really does show that the market conditions this year, well, are pretty much identical to those of last year. Now, real quick, it's my shameless plug. You knew it was coming. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help. Now, onto the condo market. 
The condo market has just been steady eddy so far in 2024. We have 1,757 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, this is a 23 unit decrease from last week's 1,780 units. It is 11.5% more than the inventory levels on the market just 28 days ago. We continue to stay in line with 2023. We did jump up slightly above the levels in 2023 as we now have 20 additional units on the market today than today last year, 405 more units than compared to today in 2022. New listing activity was up this week. There were 327 condos that came on the market last week with a four week rolling average of 286 condos. Now the 327 units listed was 34 units for 11.6% more than the 293 condos that came on the market in the same week in 2023. Under agreements, they continue to go toe to toe with 2023 as well. This week we put 335 units under agreement. This 335 units was 12 units we're three and a half percent shy of last year's numbers. We put 347 condos under agreement. So two weeks ago, it was seven units shy. And then last week, it was six units shy. Now it's 12 units shy. Our under agreements are right in line with 2023. That four week rolling average is 237 units. So 11.6% more listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling three and a half percent fewer condos. There were 140 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $700,000 and a median sales price of $523,000. This same week last year, there were 206 condos that sold. So sales levels were down by 32%. Months of inventory actually ticked up to 1.87 months from last week's 1.81 months. And this is compared to the months of inventory levels of 1.67 months this week last year. Any chance that you could just do me a huge favor? Can you just hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference that YouTube algorithm pushes out to other people. I just can't even tell you how much I appreciate it. And it just helps me as well as the channel. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So if you don't like considering subscribing, I appreciate that as well. Time to talk about interest rates because, well, they're important. Interest rates this week were really unchanged, which is interesting considering we had some hot economic data. Hot is not necessarily good if you're wanting interest rates to go down because ultimately the data pointed to inflation coming back a little bit. So it was kind of interesting to see that interest rates, well, they didn't jump up. My thoughts here are that even if inflation shows itself again, the market is pricing in that the Fed doesn't have what it takes to increase interest rates right now. The March rate cut looks to be off the table. Now the big money is talking about May or June rate cuts. Ultimately, if inflation rates start coming back, rather than cutting rates, they're just going to keep them steady and won't do any more increases. That's what I'm thinking because, again, it's an election year. But to the point of interest rates, check out this article. The average U.S. homebuyer has gained $40,000 in buying power in the last three months as mortgage rates cool. That is how much interest rates make a difference. The rule of thumb is that for every 1% that interest rates go down, then homebuyers pick up an additional 10% of buying power. Now, a home buyer with a $3,000 monthly housing budget can now afford a $453,000 house, according to Redfin. Now that number will change based on how much someone's putting down. This is a great example. Someone who's putting down 20% could buy a lot more of an expensive house than somebody who's putting down 3.5%. But interesting quote in the article, lower borrowing costs since the end of 2023 have brought some much needed relief to the U.S. housing market. Sales, which were frozen, over last year are beginning to pick up steam, a sign that improved affordability has more buyers wading back into the market. They are also quoted as saying, and something that I couldn't agree more with, is that trying to time the market around mortgage rates is probably a waste of energy, as affordability is unlikely to change meaningful in the next several months. And how about this one? Something we, well, all very much new because you watch the channel, right? U.S. home prices rose for the 10th straight month in November, but gains slow significantly. And it's the why that you know. They showed this graph of the 10 months of pricing gains, and we'll compare this to our Massachusetts graph now. Prices go up in the spring and then retreat into the fall and are relatively level in the winter. What was November again? It was the fall. Spring home buyers, starting your search early will save you tens of thousands of dollars. Just figured not to state what is now hopefully obvious. Well, again. And one more. You would think that this would help with our housing crunch that we are seeing here in Massachusetts. In 2023, Massachusetts saw a net migration 
losing a little over 39,000 people. Now, I would hate to see what our market would look like if we had a positive net migration of 39,000. Can you imagine all those people needing houses? Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a home, then I would be truly appreciative if you could pass along my contact information. You can also visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com or find all of my contact information right there in the description below. Until next time.